that was the first time Jay saw an Ultima 9085 3D printer part outside of this facility. Mm. And it freaked him out. Because he spent, he spent hours, hours tuning in this part just so it, it's perfect surface finish, right? And then we go to the show, and there's this big display part, and it's got all these little specs. And, I and felt the same like, way. And he's like, what? I was like, I'm like, dude, you're doing better than, than, the, than the big machines, man. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast without a name. If you have a good suggestion for a name, I don't know why I'm talking like an NPR correspondent. Uh, what's a good name? We got to name this thing, man. Dude, we do. Dude, we do. There we go. Dude, we and do. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing before I, I guess we get too far into it is people loved that bamboo video. Oh, they lo- yeah, sure. loved it. I will say, we got a lot of comments on that video. And the biggest thing I noticed was I don't think most of those people watched the video before they commented. Oh, they did. They just chose to listen to what they heard, the specific thing that affected them. Right, right. Look, listen, I own a bamboo at home. I use it all the time. It's the only printer I have that works flawlessly. Yeah, we got one here. We got one here. On a a separate network. (laughs) And on that note, I stand by absolutely everything I said and cope. Yeah, you know. I'll double down. It, it is interesting. It's um, there. There is so much good about the bamboo. It's an incredible machine, and I agree. It has opened up the world of three D printing to so many people. That Which would we never needed to happen. Do it. They would never have even gotten into it before. It's easy. No, it's a good thing. Um, it's a it, good it's thing. It's hundred percent a good thing. So just so you guys know, uh, the editors decided to make the title uh, "This Machine <laughs> Ruined Three D Printing," and man, that was polarizing. Yeah, yeah, and it worked. Uh, but we got some other topics like that today. So uh, let's. Uh, Let's maybe dive in. We will consider names that are posted down below. Uh, if you guys like this content, we'll keep doing it. And um, and if you don't like it, we're going to keep doing it anyway. <laughs> so big corporations versus open source. I've got a lot of thoughts on that. As a, as a company, we've always been we've always leaned towards open source. Why? Away from, away from proprietary, right? Why? Uh, just so, you know, material cost is lower. You can get different parts, modify stuff. You can modify it the way you want to versus closed source. Usually you have to slice the part the three ways you're given, and that's your only option. So we've, we've liked that. We like being able to do more stuff to it if we want. Honestly, I get why they do it. Yeah. And if I was a big company, I'd do it too. They do it because... You have to be like an ultimate power. It's like be, it's like being sold Windows with no user interface. Just be like, oh, just no, just run the commands, just use the you know command prompts. Yeah. It's like I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, <laughs> so it makes it may, way easier to get into. So the actual issue is it costs so much more to buy their materials. Right. But you're right. not buying. That's not what you're paying for. Right. They're paying for the R and D and form labs. To sealed the deal for me because oh. a lot of these resins, if I were to take home this, you know, durable and, and, and what's the stiff one? Uh, they, they, they have si- silicone. Silicone, yeah. To tune that on my printer at home, I, it's a miracle that there's just a button for all these vastly different materials and that just work. And the amount of headache it probably saves them and customer support. That's not saying anything bad about you guys, but yeah. not everyone wants to tune a material. So it makes a lot of sense, but it's more expensive. At home, for my personal use, I don't want to pay the price. If I'm running a business, just please get me the one you push the button. Well, that's the thing. Let's go. So like in SLA, yeah, tuning material. Uh, in FDM, it's very similar, right? So Stratasys, $150,000. You get a machine, mm-hmm. it prints ABS. And you just paid one hundred fifty thousand dollars for it. Now the kicker is, it'll pretty much just work. You know, you got the chamber temp, you got the the material, the quality material. Now I've heard a lot of reports from the field that uh, maybe there's it's not always that great, but in general, if you're printing dual extrusion, especially like it's just dialed in. If you're doing ABS on a Stratasys, it's probably gonna work. Or on a Mark Force, right? You're gonna pay three times more for your material for your nylon. But the machine will work. It's going to be very slow. It'll take three times longer, but the machine will be, or the part will be beautiful. That's you a Mark Forge thing, right? Is yeah. Three times longer. Yeah. Like I'm not. A, I don't care about speed anyway. You, honestly, you don't have. To I slow think down about my bamboo. It. Right. Not having to worry, or even think about if your part's going to come out correctly, 
that is worth some money, man. Well, that's worth some money. Absolutely. But you still, now there's still stuff to know. You, I mean, I've not seen any ori auto orientation, whether it's SLS or SLA, that can act like, He's like perfect. nail it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you do have to just think about it a little bit. But um, if this was just a print service here, would you use open or closed source machines? I would say open because we forget sometimes that we've been tuning materials for years and... So we're yeah. trying weird stuff that no one and be like, I wonder if it works. Let's see with the, Ultim. That's expensive. That ex so so these that's companies a luxury take, we take that experience and somehow put it into like the material profile. The thing is, I, I, I always forget on Stratus, even Stratasys, I've talked to a ton of users who do Ultim parts, right? And I know, thought you said they could only print ABS. <laughs> well, you got to pay twenty thousand dollars for the license to print the high temp stuff, or you know, depending how many different types you want. But um, even that on those machines even has problems and it's even worse because if it goes down your the head is six thousand dollars the tool head and then you got to pay four thousand dollars for the technician visit and you're on a ten thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar a month service plan so you're paying name you one might... mechanical device that won't have issues oh gosh um, it's impossible they uh, just do the well, more expensive a product is and the higher the cost of entry, I think a lot of large corporations I seriously look at that and be like, if something is affordable or cheap, what's the catch? Yeah. Let's just, we don't have yeah. the time for this. Let's just buy the expensive one. And they get away yeah. with it. And people get to raise their price. If they're selling only to large industry, ultra huge, they can make the price whatever they want because they know whoever's on the other end, if they want it, they can buy it. They'll absorb that cost. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so let's That's talk about That's maybe a little unfair, but... Let's talk about, like, the 22 IDEX for 15000 and you buy your materials at a significant discount over Stratasys materials, or you buy a Fortis 450 MC, and you want to print Ultima 9085. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some advantages in that the size of the build volume and the temperature of the build volume lets you do bigger parts, mm -hmm. but, I mean, we've got that with the Aeon 3D Hilo, so that machine and the AI stuff it's doing is going to overtake that soon ideally but 22 idx most parts high temp parts etc what do you really need to be able to print consistently on that i mean like a stratasys you're going to have less options less things you put the part in hopefully it accepts it and then you hit slice and go versus the 22 you're going to use a slicer you got to have somebody who kind of knows orientation stuff so you can orient it properly yeah. and then a little bit about slicer settings and then you got to watch the part because uh, sometimes in high temp, things just happen. Watch the beginning of the part. Watch the beginning of the part. And then examine the part after. Maybe there's some other adjustments that need to happen. So so for that all to happen, you you know, it's you want somebody who's got some experience or is willing to learn and, and learn the machine, learn the workflow, everything else. Now, if you're doing CF nylon, it's, you know, right out the gate, you know, probably. Yeah, we're talking whatever. about PEIs, like PEX, P, yeah. PPSF. 360 Celsius and above on the nozzle. Yeah. Things get weird. Things get way harder. Uh, it, it, well, it depends because the major limitation, I don't know. It's I don't want to say that. The limitation with the 22 is the size of those super exotic materials of the part you can yeah, print. Yeah, 100%. That, that is the limitation. That is the limitation. So if you yeah. actually want to do something that's... Big and thick. To, most people that call, and I don't think all everyone knows this already. What? I'm just laughing at that last comment. They aren't trying to do, look, if you need to do a giant part, you know, 200, 200, or even in old, yeah, you need a very, very, very hot chamber. We Since the day one, we've been printing in 90C chambers peak Ultim for the list. Eight years almost. Eight, for NASA. Actually, eight years? Yeah, over eight years now. SpaceX, Orbital ATK, Pumpkin, North the list Grumman, goes Northrop Lockheed Grumman, Martin. Lockheed Martin. Uh, let's just keep flexing. <laughs> yeah. Go through the list. ABB, yeah, Fanuc, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sandia. Oh, got all the. Uh, let's not forget Oak Ridge. Oak, yeah, um, Los Alamos. Los Alamos. <laughs> dude, dude, we're the it, sh dude, we're the. Sh hey, um, I, I watched Oppenheimer on the plane visiting my my family. Right, and it freaked me out because 
they were making all these labs that we've been working with for years. And I didn't really, oh, yeah. like, I knew, but but it put it all together. And I'm like, I, 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 oh, have, they have, history. I have contacts in every single one of those labs. This is fascinating. This, this is cool. <laughs> Humble this is brag. Humble brag. Yeah. It's well, pretty, I, I would, too. Cool, I would. Um, it's profound. It's like, it's, it's a trip. It's a trip. It's a, it's a big trip. Um, what was I getting at? Uh, that most of the time when people need to do these high-tent materials, look, if you need to do a large form, one single run in a big part, 22 is not for you. If you need to do absolutely anything else, the price of entry is drastically right. lower. If you need and that, that's we, the high-low. That's the high-low, hands yeah, down. There's a lot of machines that can do it, I think. I mean, what? I trust the high-low. High-temp? It, it, ah. Large, high temp. Large. I mean, you have mini factories. Man, uh, remember when we went to that show in Long Beach and that just, just, just brick of Ultim? Yeah. I forget what it was. And I was just Big like, intake, it had flaws. Like manifold or something. It I had never saw one flaws. print that did not have some kind yeah. of ghosting or over extrusion. Yeah. But ringing. Still, I was very, very impressed. Little specs. And I was kind of stoked to see the flaws. I was well, like, well, that, all right. that was when, that was the first time Jay saw an Ultim 9085 3D printer part outside of this facility. Mm. Uh, and and it freaked him out because he's like, what? Because he spent he spent days, you know, or you know, hours, hours tuning in this part just so it it's perfect surface finish, right? Uh, and then we go to the show and there's a big display part and it's got all these little specs. And I that. felt and the same like, way. And he's like, what? I was like, I'm sweet. like, dude, you're doing better than than the odd, than the big machines, man. Um, now big parts like that, like you say, there are. I'm not s- trying to tell you the 22 is the best thing on earth, but the 22 is the best. What, why? Why is the 22? It's why cool. do we care so much about the so, uh, so under the size of a softball, all those high temp parts mm-hmm. or print or <laughs> materials, all the high temp materials under the size of a softball, you can pretty much do. And if you need to do a batch of those, here's the other thing. 80 to 90 percent of parts in high temp materials that come through our print service. And this is for people who know 3D printing or have, are just like, hey, yeah, we're, we need to go down this road. Um, are smaller than a baseball. Yep, like, that's the uh, thing. Even golf the... ball size. So, by the way, we do sell at visionminer.com. So if you want SLA, FDM, SLS, 3D scanners, 3D software, or any of the tools in between, that is uh, what we do for a living. That's how we are able to create this content. So we appreciate it when you go and check out what we got uh, and give us a call. We'll help you with it if you need that. So I was going to say either the people know the limitations already or – it seems like not many people need to print very large well, parts out of those materials, so and if they do, they see and see it. They want 3D print. Why do so many people want these materials? They've been around 40 years, right? 50 years, 60 years. So, <sighs> oh, boy. In you machining wanna... and injection molding, it's also very difficult to do large parts because there's so much heat. There's so much warping. Peak. Mm-hmm. Remember that dude that came in last week, and he was the injection molds peak? Nope. And, Oh, were you there for that? Um, yeah. No. Well, nope. he's picking No, up his, but I've heard about 20. how yeah. and CNCing, they're just like, oh, it's a yeah. nightmare. So he's picking up a machine tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And like they do a ton of that stuff. And like for parts that are uh, within a certain size, it's massively more efficient. Yeah, um, I've heard of Unless you're doing 80 million parts or something, some high volume, and you need it in two weeks, then injection molding is the way to go. I've like heard CNC. of CNC. Same Pe- thing happens. I've heard of breaking molds of it oh, breaking yeah. molds. Breaking aluminum molds. So it's yeah. no joke. It's hard to and don't that's why I don't use it. Yeah. It sucks. It's great. It's cool, but it sucks. Don't yeah. use it. You don't need to use it. I'm yeah. sorry. You want to get into that? Well that, you don't need to use it. You don't. Yeah. Everybody everybody call or a lot of people are like they want the best thing. So that's peak, right? And we're like, yeah, but what are you actually doing? Uh, and so we have to go through and consult. And a lot of the times we find carbon fiber nylon is, is I perfectly I just acceptable. went through that with our new, I, I'm not, can I use his name? No. Manny? Yeah, Manny. Yeah. And it, it was this part, and he was having a terrible time with it, and it was a, one of those exotic materials, and I just was like, why don't we just call them and ask why they're using this? And I it was, because I knew what the answer would be. And they're like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I was told to use this. I'm like, oh, yeah, what does it need to do? I'm like, great, I'm going to make it, your print service, way cheaper. It'll do just, uh, polycarbonate was a perfect solution. Well, and SLS. What was it? Uh, NDA. Damn, all right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, nice. I don't know. It's, it, they just want, they don't know why they need it. They just need the thing. The most peak because I know peaks the best. It's lot, like you don't. Do a lot it. of the time it'll be in There's one. better one of three categories: thermal resistance, chemical resistance, or mechanical strength. 
it's it's usually one out of those three, maybe two, chemical resistance and thermal resistance, but it's, it's a trade. I can think of three anything. materials that are do better at one right, of those right, things. Exactly. At one. The thing is with Peak is that it does a very good job at all three. All three, yeah. If you get it to crystallize properly, which is a whole separate topic we could talk about another time. Peak requires real science. Like, and you need to annealing semi-crystalline versus, you know, crystalline to understand it's how to get the actual full strength out of it. It's you're never going to be great at using peak until you understand peak. And that yeah. sounds like another, it sounds, that's a hot take, but it's like, cause I was going to go into why does the military love our 22 IDEX so much? Well, stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be coming out a little bit. We're going to keep talking, keep discussing. Okay. Tight close up. I'm in charge of the media here, and things are about to change. Things are about to get real exciting, real fun, uh, levity, transparency. We already do transparency, but listen to me. Look at me in the eyes. You should subscribe because the con if you like the content you're getting now, oh, it's going to get better, bigger, more. I'm, and if you don't subscribe, you won't see it. You won't know when it's happening, but I promise you, it's worth watching, okay? So just subscribe. And, of course, if you are interested in any kind of 3D printer, 3D scanner, uh, 3D scanning software, reverse engineering or metrology inspection software, we've got a FDM, SLS, SLA, all the major types of 3D printers and the materials and the knowledge and know-how and support to go with it all. we got it all here at visionminer.com. That's what we do. That's what we bring to you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next video.